We're back on Open Line. Rory Johnston with you. Our guest tonight, Steve Ferreira, the CEO of Ocean Audit. As we talk about all the shipping delays and supply chain disruptions during the pandemic. Uh, Steve, before the break, you mentioned the backstory to all of this. And I know in the beginning of the pandemic, the issue was uh, the personal protective gear, trying to get it here. As this has gone on, um, was this pretty easy, this, this issue that we're facing right now with the backlog um, and a log jam of, of cargo ships uh, off the coast of California, was this predictable? No, it wasn't. You know, uh, I, was, uh, I took the position that we would have a surge. However, many experts thought that uh, didn't see the trans translation between consumer services shifting to consumer goods. Right. And one of the things that I found is that the amazing uh, Amazon statistics, you know, back then, Amazon had maybe uh, six to 700 containers moving a month. Now they have over 10,000. Wow. So, it, and also the other issue is for, for quite a while during the pandemic, a lot of these factories and manufacturing sites in Asia, particularly, were shut down because of COVID. And now, with cases again dropping, a lot of these places are ramping up production again. And here come the cargo ships, right? It's always been a challenge. You know, I, I think that even with, uh, uh, we saw an incident in, China, incident in China just a few weeks ago where one employee had COVID and the whole port of uh, Ningbo, which is a major port, one of the fourth largest ports in the world, shut down for a couple of days. So it's a very, very uh, precarious uh, situation with the balance of factories, the COVID-19, and obviously the container supplies that are dwindling for uh, exporters to get on the ships here to America. Yeah, and it really shows how just one issue along the line has a ripple effect, doesn't it? Well, we're seeing that right now with the ports in LA because uh, you know, with President Biden's initiatives, we're gonna try to see what we, what we can do to clear those ports out, but we've mm -hmm. got uh, over 150 ships from China that are still on their way. So, it, you know, we're gonna get hit um, and it's a very precarious situation. I think sometimes the politicians don't take into consideration. Right, and I'm glad you brought that up because I got a little bit of a couple of bullet points about uh, yesterday and what President Biden and his administration announced. One of them is that the Port of Los Angeles uh, will handle more goods at night. Uh, also, the Long Beach port, port. And by the way, these two ports handle, from what I understand, 40% of all cargo containers entering in the U.S. So. Uh, it, it really is remarkable. They're not used to seeing so many cargo ships in the queue, as they call it, out in the ocean off the coast. I mean, usually it's one or two maybe backed up. And now uh, one day, from what this article says, there were 70, a record 73 ships were forced to queue outside for a berth. That's, that's remarkable. Right. One, one thing that came up that I might share with your audience that uh, has not been widespread, even one uh, uh, California legislator has uh, announced that she'd like to have a, a bill that prohibits the ships waiting offshore because of, for example, the recent California oil spill may have been caused by one of those ships' anchors. Right. So it's a very, very hyper-connected situation. Sure is. All right, let's go to the phones and uh, welcome Mike, who has been holding. Hi, Mike, welcome. Uh, hello, Rory, and good evening to uh, Steve as well. I think, uh, I never thought this would happen in my lifetime, but what we're seeing is that uh, it took a pandemic to make us realize how we all are vulnerable uh, with all our goods and supplies, not just the death toll. Uh, I think we're seeing the blowback, first of all, of uh, most of the stuff we use in America is made overseas. Mm -hmm. So we're really reliant on everything pretty much that we get, 70% of the things we get, if not more, cars, food, clothes. Everything is made overseas, and a lot of that was done to cut cost, labor costs in America. Right. Well, now that we're in a pandemic, we see where that, where the blowback of that is. It's that we have to wait until they decide to put them on ships, and then now we've got ships. I think earlier this week it was 88, but now it's down to I think Steve said uh, a 70 or maybe the upper 60. Yep. Uh, and now basically you have workers here that have decided we need a reboot. You know, not just America, but the worker labor uh, group and people are deciding I have not been valued with the work that I do in this country 
and I'm not going back to work, and right. if I still have my job, I'm quitting. So we're seeing a whole myriad of things happening that maybe, hopefully, we can start basically from the bottom and do a better of uh, keeping a lot of companies here and paying people what they're worth right. and then penalizing those companies who want to have everything from masks to other things moved offshore so they can save uh, tax dollars. And I, I'd like to hear Steve's uh, uh, okay. You know, yeah, Mike, thank you. Uh, very, what he thinks of that overall. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, just kind of the widespread impact of all of this, Steve. Oh, uh, Mike, you know, you're so spot on. I, I had a conversation with a, a, a good friend and the CEO of, a, of a, a, a major importer. And uh, he makes a product that's very low value that's used in a lot of U.S. supermarkets uh, around uh, the country. And, you know, he told me, he said, Steve, you know, I'd love to source and, and have, made, have this product manufactured here. And even with ocean costs going up seven to ten times what he normally pays, it's still cheaper for him to buy the product from Asia rather than to start a manufacturing facility in America. And so I think we have to be careful because we have product values of, you know, millions of dollars of a certain uh, commodity, very high end machinery and very low value of you know right. something that you find for $1.99. So I think we have to really look uh, and, and how do we control the cost best but yet support the American economy? Well, and, and I've always said with anything, what we've all gone through, not just with the healthcare scare and the virus itself, but the implications now that we're all facing economically, um, is that hopefully we can learn from it. And we can really take a look at what happened and maybe better anticipate things in, down the line. Do you agree with that? I think that what we're going to start to see is we'll, maybe we'll see more like raw commodity come in and then like for a shirt, for example, then we'll have the shirt manufactured or assembled you know, back in the States. I think that is being looked at. I do know that most of my clients and many of the other big uh, importers have started to pull away a little bit from China to look for a, uh, a more safer alternative. Right. And some of that even might mean nearshoring, where you start to move the product closer and closer, the origin of the product closer and closer to North America. Sure, that makes sense. So we, you were talking about cost earlier, even with the shipping costs going up. I mean, we know we've seen inflation rising uh, and there's a big political argument about what exactly is causing it all, but we know that this is definitely a factor when, you know, demand is not being met. You, you mentioned something in the break uh, about dishwashers, which I know it's a common appliance. A lot of people uh, buying new dishwashers for their kitchens and they've had to wait and it's costing more, right? The dishwashers, washers and dryers have been in big shortage. And the, the thing that I want to share with the audience today is that a year ago, the ocean freight component of a, of, of a uh, dishwasher at, at a Home Depot or Lowe's might have been $7 or $6. Today, because of ocean freight rates so high, that component is about $28 to $29. So either the uh, retailer absorbs that or guess who passes or guess yeah. who uh, passes it gets passed on to right. you, and that's the uh, the consumer which which we are seeing for sure i mean that's a you know four times the amount jump um do you think down the line that those costs will come back down well you know that's the the the, the, crystal, the crystal ball question yeah. right now we have a lot of indices that freight indices that are tell us that hey the rate should be this and this you know a year from now we're starting to see a lot of importers do something very unique, Rory, that we've never seen before. They're trying to get two and three year ocean contracts to get the best possible rates they can to get those rates down. But in reality, we, we may only be going from say, and I say only because it's outrageous, but we may be going from say $10,000 a container to only $7,000 a container. Right. And that's still almost three times more than 2019. Wow, remarkable. Let's go back to the phones. We've got James on line one. Hi, James. Welcome. Hi, James. Good evening, fellas. Um, i got a comment here. Okay. Well, what I think needs to happen, and this would really change everything in about uh, a week, two, three, or whatever, uh, Biden needs to call up the National Guard in each state 
They have thousands of trucks and drivers nationwide in each state. Where is the scenario think tank? Hmm. This is a national emergency. You should activate U.S. Army to assist. They've got the drivers. They've got the trucks. They can help. They can get it to where it needs to go, and then UPS, whatever, they can pick it up from there. I mean, come on. This is America. China, they're all Russia. They're laughing at us. That's all I got. All right. Well, thank you very much, James. I appreciate it. And let me just point out before we get into this that this is what I know about what was announced yesterday. The Biden administration earlier this year set up what they call a supply chain task force. They appointed a port envoy to find some remedies to the disruption. Uh, those ports, L.A. and Long Beach, will now be offering 24-7, uh, basically, work. Uh, nighttime shifts, weekend hours, so they can unload cargo faster. And some of the big retailers, Walmart, uh, Samsung, Home Depot, Target, they're going to boost their nighttime operations at the port. We're told that should help clear about 3,500 extra containers a, a week. Um, is that a step in the right direction, Steve? No, it's a it's a drop in the uh, yeah. proverbial. Thing. And I, I also yeah. want to point out the lack of workers out there too. A lot of these, the ports and the retailers are struggling with, uh, you know, not enough workers. I have comments where my clients can't can't even get workers for their first warehouse shift. Never mind their second and overnight shifts. And but I think James's point was really interesting about the uh, the National Guard. You know, I think on real in, in face value, that sounds really interesting. But the reality is, remember, most of these importers have very sophisticated delivery systems and very sophisticated distribution systems that that the truck drivers uh, and, and the incumbent drivers know, like the back of their hand. Right. You know, it's very difficult to train new drivers. So I think your idea has a lot of merit. Right. But maybe we have to direct it somewhere else. And you know what he mentioned is is this to the point of what we would call a national emergency and that would be up to the administration to decide and then how to implement maybe the reserve in in other ways to help but i don't think it's quite there yet right well i think it's interesting that they came out right now you know everyone knows we're in the middle of peak season which means that if it's not here right now it's not going to make it for christmas i find it very curious that they uh, banded together now at this point where a lot of the Christmas goods are already said and done with. So this should have, in my opinion, professional opinion, have taken place three or four months ago, yeah. even five months ago. And we'll have to see where the chips fall here. But anything that increases productivity is always good in my book. All right. When we come back, we'll uh, take more calls, 737 plus, And we will talk about the impact on you, the consumer, as here we are mid-October. The holidays are around the corner. What does this mean for you? And also small businesses are impacted. All of that when we come back.